Hey, Grace Chapel Life Groups. We are so excited to be with you one more time. And we are going through the uh, series, the BLESS series, as we call it, the B-L-E-S-S. There you go. S, S, -S B-L-E-S-S. <laughs> Today we are on the E, which is eating a meal. And this will all make sense once we get through with this. So oh, yeah. we have a passage here in Matthew, Matthew 9. You're going to read that for yeah. us? So this is uh, Matthew chapter 9, uh, verses 9 through 13. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at a table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Very pretty famous passage yeah. in Matthew. I mean, in Matthew. Um, I love The Chosen. When, you, you're, when, when Jesus calls Matthew and The Chosen. Oh, if yeah. you haven't seen The Chosen, then indulge us for a second. But when he just calls Matthew and he's like, me? Because he was like so lost and he knew he was undeserving. And yeah. Yeah. But, uh, great scene. Yeah. But it's cool, the first thing in the Chosen and in here in the Bible, uh, first thing after Jesus called Matthew was, he was like, get your house ready, we're coming over for dinner. That's right. We're going to bring a bunch of tax collectors, a bunch of sinners, and we're going to have a party. <laughs> Which was not what the disciples probably thought was going to happen. No, and it makes me wonder, like, if you meet somebody who's unchurched, do you just be like, hey, get your house ready, <laughs> you're yeah. going to host a dinner party? Bring all your unrighteous <laughs> friends. Yeah. Bring all your tax collectors and sinners with you. Yeah. But yeah, that's, you know, I think that's what living the Christian life is all about. It's, it's about, you know, being in relationship. So, you know, let's, let's try to see who in, this, in our life that God wants us to be praying for, or even people we haven't met yet. Mm -hmm. if, like, God, bring someone into my life, then we're going we're gonna to listen without judgment. But, you know, where do you listen? You know, that's, uh, where is a good place to listen? Well, it seems like sitting down over a meal would be an amazing place to just sit and be able to talk and listen to somebody. Oh, yeah, 100% for sure, because you're, yeah. you're both getting enjoyment out of food, enjoyment of each other's company, and then you can just simply be. Yeah. No pressure. Just listen to them. Yeah. Just listen to them while you eat. Yeah, it's a real, it's a low-key environment. There's no mm -hmm. expectation. When you say, hey, let's go grab lunch or come over to my house for dinner, no one's thinking, oh, my gosh, this is a trap. This is a trap. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just like, yeah. oh, cool, I'm going to go have dinner with this guy. And obviously, you know, wisdom would say you don't just, like, dive bomb them at once with as soon as they sit down you're like so do you know jesus <laughs> yeah you know we go back to b and l we want to go back to listening and so i think this whole series the b l e s s you know it's a great little system um that if we follow if we begin with prayer and then we listen as we eat um and without judgment i think people will really open up their hearts and um and and tell us things that they probably wouldn't have told us otherwise yeah because i mean you think about like um you know if like I'm just sitting here thinking as you're talking, like if 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 I'm an unbeliever and you, like, hey, you want to come to church? Yeah. Probably gonna be like, nah, yeah. maybe not. I enjoy my sleep. But if you're like, hey, Will, let's let's go grab lunch. Yeah. Or why don't you come over for dinner? It's like, oh, okay. I'm gonna get a free meal, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I'm gonna get to just have a conversation with you. There's no there's no pressure. There's no you know, um, expectations of me to do anything, just to come over and simply sit down with you, recline at the table, and eat. Yeah. And if we're supposed to be living like Jesus and doing what Jesus did, then he models this over and over. I mean, the Last Supper, you know, I think the Last Supper is kind of interesting because, you know, eating is kind of intimate. It is pretty intimate. And right before he's about to go to the cross, what does he do? He sits his disciples down and has a meal with them, you know, and and... You can just imagine that moment. They, they didn't know what was going to happen, but Jesus knew exactly what was about to take place. And what did he want to do? And his last hours before he goes to the cross, he wanted to sit down with his friends and just have a meal. Yeah, yeah. And one of my favorite Bible stories, um, you know, when uh, Jesus is resurrected and the disciples are like, what do we do now? Well, let's go fishing. Yeah. You know, and they're on the boat and they're fishing and they hear, you know, from the shore, like, hey, cast your net on the other side. And mm -hmm. you know, like Peter immediately hears his shepherd's voice, yeah. knows who it is, dives in the water, swims to shore. 
and what does Jesus have waiting for him? <laughs> a charcoal fire yeah. with fish yeah. being cooked. Yeah. So he uses, like, he's he's going to redeem Peter mm-hmm. in that moment, and he's got a meal waiting for him. Yeah. You know, it's just that there's so many meals that are shared yeah. with people in the New Testament, the Old Testament, this entire book is full of it. Yeah. And we've got the big meal to come. Oh, yeah. The wedding supper of the lamb. That's yeah. it. And yeah, it, you know, your wife is the hospitality queen here. She is a queen of hospitality. She is. And we love her for that. And this all goes back to hospitality. It's, and it even goes beyond eating a meal. It just goes beyond to like making people feel comfortable. Like yeah. have a seat, sit down, you know, you know, kick your feet up. It's just hospitality, making people feel welcome. Because I think a lot of times, you know, like you said, people don't feel welcome in a church. And yeah. so they need an on-ramp to getting into a foot into a church. Yeah, and what a, what a better way than to... You know, hey, why don't you um, let me let me buy you breakfast, mm-hmm. bring him to church, mm-hmm. have a meal with him, like that whole fellowship hall. Like that's that's that is her heart and her desire mm-hmm. um, is for people to come in and just be able to share a meal right. and have a conversation. Mm-hmm. No expectations, no pressure, no nothing. Yeah, just eat a meal. Yeah, I think some of us want to, you know. I, I don't know, not a lot of us, but I know it, there's a tendency in, in all of us to like, you know, I want to make, I got to get someone to say the sinner's prayer. I got to check a box. You know, how many people did you save this month? You know, like, oh, I didn't save any. Ah, oh, you know, just, just, but, you know, we're not all called to the same things. Like eating a meal is planting seeds, mm-hmm. you know, and I've planted way more seeds than I've reaped harvest. You know, I've led a couple of people to the Lord, but like I've planted way more seeds. And I think we need to get, you know, people in the church just used to the fact that, you know, you're not always going to be the one leading someone in a sinner's prayer. Yeah. Sometimes your job is just to sit down with somebody, have a meal, and just love them and show them the love of Christ. And that is that is the foundation that is being laid before someone can ever come to Christ. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. it's just, the, you know, inviting your neighbor or your friend or your coworker, just come have a meal. Yeah. Just come have a meal. And, and let me just, let me love on you, let me serve you, let me... Like, I'm just going to remove any kind of angst and anxiety from this situation. All I want to do is cook you a burger, some fries, have a salad, and let's just chit chat about life. Yeah. Do you think that? Um, I know this is we're very focused on eating um, because it's you know the sermon's basically about having a meal. But do you think that like this concept also applies to other things like working out with someone, going shopping with someone, doing a crafting with someone, you know, going fishing with someone? It, yeah. It, I, I can see how that same concept applies. Do you, do you? Yeah. No. I. 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 I totally. I totally buy it. I mean, I'm a. You know. I. I love to play golf and and and. Yeah. I mean, you have great conversations on the golf course with people, and you know, there's. You know, you have a chance to chit chat with them when you're in the cart. You go hit your shot. You get back in. You pick up the conversation, mm-hmm. and you just keep rolling. There's just a. It, it, it's. It's all the same. It's just loving on people. Just, yeah. Just not being a, a, a voice of condemnation, being a voice of love, being a voice of truth, being a voice of reason, just being a friend yeah. to somebody. And sometimes that's all it takes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it needs a whole lot more. But yeah. if, if, if that person can look at you and they're like, why is he so nice to me? Mm-hmm. Why is she so nice to me? What is it about them that makes them want to do this for somebody like me? Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they're they're Christians. Yeah. Well, this must be how they act all the time because this yeah. seems real and legit. And now, like you said, you've planted seeds. Mm-hmm. It may be somebody else's job to water and to reap, but you've planted the seed. You've done the first step. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, <clears throat> whether you're taking a walk around a lake or golfing or shopping or, mm-hmm. you know, fishing, whatever – it really, you're just living life with someone. You're just doing life. Yeah. You're, you know, they don't, they feel, I think it's a safe place for someone to just, like you said, feel loved upon. And, you know, Jesus said, it's interesting, he ends this chapter with, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And I think we can be very insular as Christians sometimes, just in our own little Christian bubble, not hanging out with anyone who's not a believer. And we sometimes shield our kids from that, like, you can't hang out with them because they're not a Christian. You know, they play violent video games or whatever, and you can't. So we shield ourselves a lot. Um, and, you know, we, we shouldn't be friends with the world, but we should be friends with the people of the world. There's a, there's a big difference, there I think. Big difference, and so yeah. 
I think this is a really good passage to get us out of our bubble and to say, hey, like, do you even know who your neighbor is? Invite them over for dinner, take them golfing, take them fishing, take them shopping. Just do life with these people because I think that's what we're lacking, um, especially in a place like Williamson County where we can all just kind of, everything, life just seems perfect. And we, every, we think everyone's a Christian. Like, oh, well, they're, you know, I'm in Williamson County, so everyone's a Christian. And we don't even yeah. think about like reaching out to the lost and the least. But there's, as me and you have seen recently, we've gone on, we've uh, went to a school and heard about a lot yeah. of people in Williamson County who are the lost and the least, and it. it breaks your heart. It does, it does. And, you know, and, and really when you think about it, like, we all have this currency called time, mm-hmm. and we all value our time, but, yeah. like, just spend a little bit of it yeah, and invest it in somebody else. That's good. That's all Jesus is asking us to do, just invest yeah. the time in somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's a great encouragement for all of us to, uh, let's get outside of our bubble. Let's talk in our groups about how we can do that, how we can... What are some practical ways that we can, you know, stretch outside of our comfort zone, outside of our time constraints, and just love on people? Um, you know, it doesn't mean you go and stand on a street corner holding the sign. It <laughs> just means you invite someone over for dinner. Tip. And you just talk about whatever you want to talk about. And hopefully you can steer that conversation towards the things of God um, in a gentle and loving way. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time. See y'all.